Nancy Sepulveda met country music icon George Jones in 1981, and they were married in 83. At the time, the Country Music Hall of Famer was addicted to cocaine and alcohol. I didn't know he was addicted. I thought we were all just partying. And he was known for being no-show Jones, as he frequently would miss his shows due, due to these addictions. Nancy was able to sober him up, get him off of drugs and alcohol, and she literally saved the life of one of country music's most beloved and iconic legends. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy actually fought the mafia that was trying to kill George and herself, and her determined efforts eventually put them all in prison. Well, all except for Charlie Monk. <laughs> Whoops. The Louisiana native soon became Jones' manager, making sure he was drug-free and showing up with his unmistakable voice to every show, much to his fans' delight. Nancy believes that God put her on earth just to make sure the king of country music made it to heaven. Since his death in 2013, Nancy shifted into the business of keeping the legendary impact of George Jones' life as a permanent part of Music City's landscape by opening the George Jones Museum in downtown Nashville. The museum is complete with a gift shop, restaurants, event space, rooftop bar and patio where thousands of tourists and fans can come and take a little George Jones home with them. Nancy has also started a George Jones white lightning moonshine and vodka line that George always wanted to do. If anybody know how to make it, he sure should have. <laughs> George had always said that alcohol had owned and controlled him most of his life and it was time for George to own it instead. In early 2017, Nancy will see an eight-year dream come to fruition with the completion of a George Jones movie. Nancy, we have a special message for you from Montgomery Gentry. Hey, we're Montgomery Gentry, and we'd like to congratulate all the accomplished women being inducted into the Source Hall of Fame tonight. We'd especially like to thank our friend, Nancy Jones. Man, we congratulate you. We love you so much. Thank you for what you've done for country music. That's right. And congratulations to all of you women tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage 2016 Source Hall of Fame inductee, Nancy Jones. Well, as y'all know, I do not make speeches. Callie, quit that. I don't make speeches at all. I'm not very good at any of this stuff. But what I'm going to say is I love all of y'all, and thank you so much for even thinking of me for this. But in 1981, I went on a bumpy ride with George Jones. And in 1983, I guess it even got bumpier because I ended up marrying the man. And I went on a roller coaster then. But it, it was all worth it. And I feel, and always will feel, that I was put on this earth to save a good, wonderful man that everyone out here loved. It doesn't matter what George Jones did, everybody and the fans and all of the music industry always had their arms open for George Jones. And I do appreciate every bit of that from all of y'all. <laughs> I have to also thank, and this is going to be, uh, I've said it when we had our luncheon, Sheila Shipley was something that I admired very much at MCA Records. I uh, would always go in and George would go meet with someone or talk to someone and I would go in Sheila's room and say, okay, how do you do this and how do you do that? And 
Not one time did she say, oh, Nancy, you can figure this out and do it yourself. She sat on and explained everything to me. I'll never forget one time I was supposed to ask her something. We got it in the parking lot, and George said, did you ask her? And I said, oh, darn, I forgot. So we waited till Sheila came out. I met her in the parking lot and said, I got one more question. So I do want to thank her for helping me to understand the music industry. And also, my little buddy down here, Scott Rochetta. I used to go to Scott and say, how do you get these people to play these songs? How do you do it? I don't understand. I can't get George's music on there. And he's like, you got to make George do the interviews. Well, that wasn't going to work, and you know it wasn't, Scott. So I did them. I'd say, how do you do it? He said, here, here's the whole list. Take these, call them, call them every day and say, can you add this song? Can you add this song? Well, I did. I would get up two, three hours, especially one guy I remember in Alaska. I would get up really early, call him. His last name was Ford, so I could remember that one because that was my, really my maiden name. I called him and I said, you've got to play this song. And he said, lady, if you quit calling me, I will play this song. I will add it. I'll leave it on here for three weeks. Just don't call me anymore. So I did learn that much from Scott. <laughs> but I, I, I'm very nervous and I'm probably coming off really stupid out there, but, uh, I want everyone to know, as everybody in Nashville, Brenda Lee, I used to bug her to death every Monday. Oh, she would expect my phone call. Everybody did. It was like, oh, you know, the crazy woman's coming to town. But they all ended up loving me, and I don't know why, because sometimes I did get kind of uh, crazy and kind of mean, and because I had a lot to work with when I knew I was going back home to try to get George to go on the right track. And I... I did, and I'm very proud of that, and I do thank the good Lord up above. I know that he, he put me here for that. And for everyone that has not heard this or would like to hear this, I know that George Jones is in heaven right now smiling at me. And I remember in 1993 when he got Vocal Event Award, I said, George, he said, I'm going to the bathroom. I said, don't go. You're going to win. He said, we got, I got rough competition here. I got Reba McIntyre. We got this. We got that. I will, Trisha Yearwood, I'll never win. George, don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, he did. And he won. And I was pushed on the stage by Garth Brooks. You can't let them call him a no-show. So I did go out there. I accepted the award, and I looked just as stupid on there as I do as right now. <laughs> but they were not going to call him a no-show. So I didn't just marry George Glenn Jones. I married George Glenn Jones, possum no-show Jones. <laughs> but I know he's in heaven, and I know he showed up for that because the very last words that George Jones said after not talking for three or four days in the hospital, Callie, don't cry. He said, well, hello there. I've been looking for you. My name's George Jones. That was God's way of letting me know I did my job. Thank you. Thank you.